Lewisine has had a few. So obviously Lewisine, Vikings first round pick a year ago, breaks his leg in that horror uh, accident play in, in uh, was it London, right? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, misses the majority of his rookie year because of that. Working his way back, doesn't look like he's going to be starting or even featuring necessarily for the, the first team defense. Um, but he's, you know, going out there in preseason trying to show that he can be a factor for this team somehow. He got destroyed by Tajay Spears on a really nice run by Spears. The concerning thing for me on that was not necessarily, look, he came downhill, lowered his head, went in to like dive at the tackle, and Spears just leapt over him, essentially. Uh, I saw a quote after that where scene was like, I don't know what I could have done different. He just made a great play. You're like, dude, trust me, your coaches know what you could have done different. That was some horrific bad technique to tackle. Like that, if you don't know what you could have done different on that play, we've got some problems. Yeah, I told you, the Vikings are going to be one of the more fascinating teams for me this year because of all the young players that they're relying on. Scene certainly has to play better. My guy, Ivan Pace, not a, as good of a game for him as we saw. I mean, he was up and down in week one as well, but in this one, you know, you're He's going to do his best work probably as a pass rusher. We're still seeing that here in the preseason, but trying to find his way, you know, in the run game, attacking blocks, and also from a coverage standpoint. Some of the players that the Vikings are relying on this year, a Caleb Evans in the secondary and Josh Metellus, just young, unproven players, including a Lewis Seen or a, an Ivan Pace. Um, it's It could go any way for the Vikings, right? They either have these unheralded players – uh, plus a scene. They either have these players that they know something where maybe teams, other teams don't, and they're going to be great, or they're going to they're going to have some struggles. So I'm fascinated by this defense, really, for the Vikings because I think they're going to be good on offense. Um, this was a rough game in terms of. So we talked about the spectrum of how teams treat these games, and some starters. Some this was about as backupy as you're going to see from a game like Minnesota. Justin Jefferson, K.J. Osborne, Jordan Addison, all out, right? Just given the night off, not playing. Jalen uh, Naylor is expected to be like their, the next guy on the depth chart, also didn't play. So now like your battle, <laughs> the starters in this game were effectively number five wide receiver on the depth chart and onwards. Um, I mean, we, we haven't seen Kenny Nguangwu play yet for, out of the, the running backs from the Vikings. He's that kick returner that's also ostensibly a running back and now there's that second job open because of Dalvin Cook being cut and Alexander Madison behind him like I, this was rough in terms of trying to discern anything from it from a Malik Willis standpoint on the other side he has he goes 10 for 17 for 85 yards mm -hmm. uh, interception that he just throws right to a linebacker a couple other middle of the field passes that he would want back but he also had so he had more carries than completions so 11 carries um, for 91 yards. So it's kind of not completely what we expected, but if Malik Willis was asked to play games again, you're going to see a little bit maybe of what we saw from Justin Fields early last year where he had more carries than completions and just was taking as many sacks as completions. It could be ugly if yeah. Malik Willis is forced to play. I think you're, you might – there's some – some improvement there. You see the dynamic rushing ability, but as a passer, there's still a lot of room to improve there. What do you think they'll do at backup quarterback? Because it doesn't look like Will Levis is, you know, ready to take that backup spot. But given where they drafted him, they're not cutting him either, right? So they either roll into the season with that dynamic of Malik Willis is a, is a play away from being your starting quarterback, or do they actually sign somebody like is is tennessee's backup currently on the roster is what i'm asking i think they have to be because you're 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 still going to play the long game and kind of hope malik willis develops uh certainly hope that will levis develops that's your draft pick new regime comes in it's your draft pick top of the second round it, it honestly depends on if they want their backup to just bring something different to the table which is willis you know if he comes in and it's like all right now you have to defend him as a runner versus Will Levis getting backup reps the entire season. And stylistically, you're going to develop him as more of a pocket guy, like Ryan Tannehill. So when you, if you do have an injury, if Levis comes in, you're running the same offense, right? So what do, you, what do you want? Do you want to actually have something different where you're relying on Willis and his legs and trying to create some open throws off of that? Or do you want to have your backup 
running the same system as as Tannehill. I don't know what that answer is, but either way, it looks like Malik Willis, you don't want to trust him to start more than a few games right now. Will Levis, you don't want to trust him to start more than a few games right now. So pick. You I mean, want something different or you want something that looks a little bit similar to Tannehill? I wouldn't be shocked if Malik Willis doesn't make the roster and they sign somebody else to be the backup. Really? Yeah. I mean, they showed that last year. They had the, the season on the line. I know that was Willis's rookie season versus that, but the season on the line, they grabbed Josh Dobbs off the street to bring him in to start a right. must-win game against the Jacks instead of Malik Willis, who had started a few games. Remember how mad they were, or Vrabel was, that Malik Willis wasn't just operating the offense effectively, that he's still playing just ad-lib type of, type of ball? He's still doing that. Like, And it's preseason where just do what you're being asked to do even if it doesn't go well because at least you're showing you're trying to do that you know what i mean like the, the winning the games part doesn't really matter so you're actually trying to work on something specific and if you're malik willis like there's a video out there of him and then uh, will levis you know doing these kind of bag drills as a quarterback and footwork and it looks very much like willis is concentrating you know on, on slowing it down doing some very fundamental adjustments to his footwork right so do that. It doesn't matter that it's as fast as the next guy or whatever. Like you're specifically working on something that needs to be improved in your game. So, and it doesn't matter right now. So do it at whatever speed needs to be done. Just get the technique sound. The Titans want him to just run the offense. Stay in the pocket. Don't take advantage of your athleticism. Run. Like actually use the passing uh, ability that you have. Work through reads. Do that stuff. And he's not doing that even in the preseason game. It's like if that if you can't do that now, th there's no hope. We, we're not. This is not going to work. Yeah, that goes back to what I was saying about Anthony Richardson or what I thought the Eagles did with Jalen Hurts for a couple of years, which was develop as a passer, do these things that you're not as good at right now. We know at any point you can take over as an athlete. Josh Allen, elements of that, right? Work within the system. We know at any point you could probably take over as an athlete. It probably would be better for. Malik Willis's long-term development if he does work on that in the preseason at the same time like you said he could get cut it's important for him to show his ability he rushed for 91 yards you know if he's a maybe the Ravens want to bring him if he got cut the Ravens bring him in as a backup to Lamar Jackson something you know, whatever <laughs> he could go to Philadelphia you know instead of Mario to whatever it might be um so it's an interesting spot for Willis where he wants to show his ability, but you also want to have that long-term development right. as but well. His, but his problem from a Tennessee point of view is that he scrambled on 41% of his dropbacks. Yeah. Like you can't, like Sorry A, calculating that over there. A, you can't do that. Could have asked me. Thanks. A, you, you, that can't happen. And B, it's almost certainly the opposite of what they're asking him to do, you know, to focus on. Like we know you can scramble, but we don't want to see that. We want to see you erring on the other side of that line and passing as much as humanly possible and scrambling as an absolute last resort.